This is the Mazda CX-30, a compact crossover and Mazda's sales hit. This particular model is with a 150 horsepower Skyactiv-G motor. This is exactly what Mazda needed. Why? Watch this to find out. Before we go any further, a disclaimer, this is YouTube and I value your time, so I'll try not repeating everything I already said in my other reviews of Mazda models based on the new Skyactiv vehicle architecture platform. In the video description, I'm linking to the Mazda 3 reviews with the 122 horsepower Skyactiv G engine, as well as the 180 horsepower Skyactiv X engine, and to my first drive CX30 launch video. In this review, I will focus on the 150 horsepower engine and any changes that may have appeared versus what I've seen in the test vehicles I've driven earlier. So, what's the big deal with the Skyactiv G150 horsepower engine and why am I talking about it as if it was a breakthrough in the Mazda lineup? When the current gen Mazda 3 debuted in 2019, it was initially available only with the somewhat underpowered 122 horsepower naturally aspirated motor. Mazda promised a more powerful and thoroughly new 180 horsepower Skyactiv X variant, which appeared later. The problem with the Skyactiv X engine is the price. It's like jumping up a spec level and adding some options on top, or going from front-wheel drive to all-wheel drive. The range-topping engine doesn't offer performance, which would justify the extra two grand. So the 150 horsepower Skyactiv G engine slots nicely in the middle. Now that you know the baseline, let's talk Skyactiv G. You can choose it with a manual or automatic gearbox with front or all-wheel drive. The performance is not far behind the Skyactiv X. Mazda claims the 0 to 100 km per hour time for the front-wheel drive manual transmission model should be 8.8 .8 seconds, only half a second slower than the Skyactiv X. On my first test run, I got 9.7 seconds, it was a winter morning and the road was slightly slippery. I suspect in the summer on a dry road I'd do at least what Mazda claims, or even better. The claimed fuel economy is around 6 liters per 100 km combined, I'd say low 7 is achievable. Let's take a moment here to appreciate the fact Mazda is still offering 2-liter normally aspirated engines in its compact lineup. For example, in the new C4, the biggest petrol engine is a 1.2-liter. Mazda's 2-liter engines are so-called mild hybrids. Short version, better fuel economy, longer version. The system recoups kinetic energy during coasting and braking and uses it to power the car's electrical components. The mild hybrid also helps the stop and start system as well as it adds a little boost during acceleration. Very little boost. Mazda uses a 24 volt mild hybrid system instead of a 48 volt one. According to Mazda, this is due to weight saving, like everything else with Mazda. Also, apparently, it is cheaper. The Skyactiv G engine can also deactivate two out of four cylinders when the car is driving at a constant speed. In the 122 horsepower version, I did encounter some jerking and vibrating when the car was running on two cylinders. It was especially apparent with the manual transmission. In the 150 horsepower variant, the vibrations didn't go anywhere. I can feel them especially between 1500 and 2000 revs. And before you say the car is probably stalling, the Eco Nani wants me to shift up. How is it to drive? Mazda has a great manual shifter and if you don't plan driving this car around the city, go for the manual. The automatic is less great. 
But if the city is where you spend most of your time, automatic it is. Something we are slowly forgetting these days is how normally aspirated engines feel. There aren't many left because it's easier to just downsize and slap on a turbo rather than optimize the existing technology. And Mazda is all about optimizing, but in the end, if you want to get anything out of this engine, you have to drop a gear or two. Or preferably three. That's what normally aspirated engines are all about, but in a Kia or a Citroen, a smaller turbocharged engine is just more usable in everyday life. One may wonder how long the 1.2 liter PureTech will last before the timing belt turns into oblivion, but in city traffic, turbo just feels more usable. Meanwhile, Mazda is all about longevity, to a point where I get the engine up to temperature and the stop and start system is still unavailable. In most cars, stop and start system is ready to use before I get onto the main road from my house. Normally aspirated engine characteristics aside, the 150 horsepower Skyactiv-G engine is, in my opinion, the optimum choice for Mazda's compact cars, taking into account price to performance ratio. Something I haven't noticed during the CX-30 launch event was how hard the... Well, I don't think it's a suspension. I'm recording this right after the snow has melted and the roads are full of holes, but this car hits hard even on small bumps. I suspect the Yokohama Blue Earth winter tires, they get very mixed reviews. Visibility is better than in the Mazda 3, but the high window line and the A-pillar angle take some getting used to. Finally, Mazda has fixed some software issues and using Android Auto no longer disconnects traffic sign recognition. Also Android Auto now uses more screen real estate, making it easier to navigate. Inside, nothing has changed. Mazda has high quality interiors, even if one or two things drive me insane. For example, the smartphone cubby is too shallow and hidden behind cup holders. Mazda is not the only offender in this sphere, it's just bad design regardless of the brand. The center console is of course all scratch black plastic, there are two USB ports, one above the smartphone cubby and one under the armrest. To open this storage you'll need to slide the cover rather than just lift it, and if you slide it too far back you'll hit your passenger in the knee. Seat memory function requires a long press on the set button and then a long press on one or two position buttons. Why not skip set since you need to long press the position button anyway? At least the glove box is fairly large and the door pockets are usable. The infotainment system is easy to use and if you get the 360 camera you can set a priority view, for example to see the image from the front camera on startup useful if you always reverse park and then you need to drive out of a tight spot with poor visibility. In the back there's still no USB port, but at least there are AC vents, cup holders in the armrest and places for bottles in the door pockets. There is no ski hatch. Doors cover the sills though. The 430 liter boot is sort of the segment average here. There are no shopping bag hooks, no 12 volt socket, however there is now a double floor, something that was missing at the launch event. And thanks to the double floor, when you fold the back seats, you get a flat loading area. Also, this parcel shelf fits under the floor. Now, as for the floor itself, it's a two-piece job and it's kind of an origami thing. So let's see how I'll manage putting this parcel shelf under this floor using just two hands and imagine there are kids, dogs shopping around and maybe it's raining as well. Here we go. <clears throat> this is the easy part. And I already know that this parcel shelf has to go in like this, because this way it wouldn't fit. So easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? Oh, bugger. And it's raining. Oh, 
brilliant. On the plus side, there is a separate button to lock the tailgate, so now that I'm wet, I can run straight home. Bye. Later I discovered that, as usual, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Mazda has made a special animation to show off the very genius of the three-way folding boot floor. I see what they wanted to achieve and I respect that. If I have both hands free and I have a bit of patience, the CX-30 boot is my oyster. And if I don't, then I'm buggered. Price of the Mazda CX-30 started at 24,790 euro for the front-wheel drive manual transmission, 122 horsepower Skyactiv G motor. This test car is a 150 horsepower Skyactiv G with front-wheel drive and a manual transmission. With options, it costs around 33,000 euro. Mazda CX-30 is what the customers want and with the 150 horsepower petrol engine it's reasonably priced and you can also have it with all-wheel drive, something that's not a given these days even among SUVs and crossovers. And how do you like the Mazda CX-30? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time and don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.